welcome back all of you. In the last lecture, we have completed prediction of uh, stress states based on uh, modified cam clay model. In that lecture, we have seen how handy the information of yield curve is for interpreting how the stress path moves beyond yielding and what will be its implication in the volume change behavior that is V ln p dash plot. It has added more clarity we have seen. We have also discussed about determination of soil stiffness from MCCM. Now stiffness means uh, it basically uh, relates to the elastic behavior. So, we have completed more or less the stress states, the stiffness. Now, there is one more component which is left out which is strain. Now, the question is can we determine strain by knowing MCCM or by adopting MCCM. Now, strain is an integral part when it comes to the defining the constitutive relationship that is a stress strain relationship and when you consider a plastic model like uh, MCCM we need to have both the ranges that is elastic as well as the plastic range after yielding <coughs> both are important. Now unfortunately we will not be touching upon the constitutive modeling using MCCM but we will try to understand whether we can determine strain by considering MCCM model and that is what we will see in today's lecture. And when I say strain, there are two strains because we are considering everything in Q P dash plot. So, devi deviator stress and uh, mean stress. Hence, we also have deviatric strain and volumetric strain. We have also seen uh, the yield curve, the plastic potential, plastic strain increment vector where it is defined in terms of epsilon q and epsilon p dash. So, when I say determination of strain, it pertains to epsilon q and epsilon p dash that is deviatric and volumetric strain. Now, this strain has got two components, one is the elastic part, the other one is the plastic part. Now, if you are considering elastic part, it is quite easy, we just need to know only a single information based on which for different uh, stress condition, the response we can predict because it is a linear response, but the moment it yields it becomes non-linear. Now, we cannot just simply substitute the value and get the result, rather since it is a non-linear behavior it has to be in an incremental form, so small small increments both for stiffness as well as for strain determination, so that is very important. So, whatever we are going to study in today's lecture is like incremental strain determination. Okay? So, let us move on to the subject that is determination of strain from MCCM. So, as I told there are two parts, one is the volumetric strain and the other one is the deviatric strain. So, the total change in volumetric strain can be represented as delta epsilon p dash which is equal to delta epsilon p dash e which is the elastic part and ep delta epsilon p dash p which is the plastic part and it is written here. So, this is the elastic component and this is the plastic component summation of 2 gives the total change in volumetric strain. Soil sample is isotropically consolidated to p dash y that is our starting uh, sentence, it is unloaded to p naught dash a typical LOC, 
So, Q P dash critical state line. In the last lecture also, when we discussed about stiffness, we told that either void ratio or specific volume, either of the one will do. So, here also for convenience, I am considering void ratio because that is what we are familiar about, what uh, specific volume we do not use it that frequently, what we use is void ratio. So, since we are discussing about stiffness in the last lecture and strain in today's lecture, I would like to go ahead with the void ratio, but everything other than that remains same. Now, this is the yield curve which is related to P dash Y. So, the maximum yield stress is P dash Y and it is unloaded to P naught dash. Drained shearing because when we say volumetric change, it is drained response. So, the drained shearing will cause yielding at A. So, this is the point A. So, this is the point where it yields. Small increment of stress A B. Now, what goes beyond is the expansion of yield curve and that is denoted by C. So, a small increment, we are talking about a small increment of stress so that we are determining a small increment of strain as I told in the beginning. So, it is all in incremental form beyond yielding. So, that is the point B. So, let us take it downwards. So, this is P dash Y which is isotropically consolidated. Then there is unloading to P dash, P naught dash. Okay. So, this point is the unloaded point. Then the point where it yields is given by A. So, up to yield P naught dash to A, we know that it will be on the reloading line. So, then the expanded yield curve, the moment it crosses the point A, then it becomes expanded yield curve C. So, that is again plotted as C in E L and P dash plot. We also have an unloading line at C. For this particular condition, this is not important, but you will see why we have drawn this unloading line. So, this point B ideally can be represented on the unloading line of uh, C. Now, you may question like why it is not there on the unloading line of P dash Y P naught dash. Now, you need to see here there is a plastic hardening that has taken place when the ESP moves from A to B. So, a plastic hardening has already taken place means a compression has happened. That compression is given by this. So, this part P dash Y to C it has already happened. Now, it is on the C unloading line. So, that unloading line is marked here. So, that is why B will lie on this particular unloading line. So, this is represented P naught dash A is from P naught dash A, then as it moves from A to B that hardening is shown here that is A B. So, the void ratio corresponding to A is given as E A, void ratio corresponding to B is given as E B. Now, E A to E B is a plastic response that is plastic volumetric strain and P naught dash to A is an elastic strain. So, change in void ratio for this stress increment that is when the stress changes from A to B is given as delta E is equal to modulus of E A minus E B. Now, I can uh, ideally we have to write E A minus E B because E A is higher than E B, but it hardly matters you can write E B minus E A also provided you are putting modulus because we are not interested in the negative sign. So, E modulus of E A minus E B in general is the change in void ratio when there is an expansion of yield curve from A to B. Now, we know that it is M C C M. Hence, we know all the relationships related to critical state. So, we can conveniently write E A is equal to E kappa minus kappa ln P A dash. So, it is on this unloading reloading line and hence the uh, void ratio at A can be 
obtained by this expression by knowing the critical state parameter kappa. For D that is for this point which is the maximum yield stress corresponding to the starting point or the starting envelope that can be obtained as E D. It, again it is on the same unloading reloading line. So, it is E kappa minus kappa ln p dash y because d corresponding to the maximum that is p dash y. So, this particular point what we are talking about that is what is the void ratio at this, this particular point. So, that is given by E d. Now, for E kappa we can substitute because this lie on the same unloading reloading line. So, E kappa can be substituted as E d plus kappa ln p dash y. So, that we are substituting for in this first equation. So, E a is equal to now E kappa is substituted by E d plus kappa ln p dash y from this equation minus k kappa ln p dash a. So, we can write E a is equal to E d plus kappa ln p dash y upon p dash a. Similarly, you can also get the expression for E b. Now, same way E b is equal to E kappa minus kappa ln p dash b. Now, please remember even though I have written E kappa here, this would change. Why? Now, the point b is on another unloading reloading line and this point we have specified when we discussed about the critical state parameters like E kappa or V kappa keeps changing depending upon the point where it is unloaded. So, accordingly this E kappa is different from the previous E kappa, but since this E kappa is not going to come into the equation I have not used a separate terminology. So, but then you need to understand we are now discussing about the line C B. So, accordingly E B is equal to E kappa minus kappa ln P dash B just like what we have got for E A and this point E C can be written as E kappa minus kappa ln P dash Y C this particular point. So, this is P dash Y C. Again okay. So, again this uh, P dash Y C uh, E kappa can be substituted. So, you can write E B is equal to substitute for E kappa that is E C plus kappa ln P dash Y C minus kappa ln P dash B. So, just like you have written for E A we can write E B is equal to E C plus kappa ln P dash Y C upon P dash B. Now, for E A we have E D and for E B we have E C and we also know that this point D and this point is related. How it is related? Because it is falling on the I C L line or N C L line. Accordingly, point C that is E C can be written as N naught. N naught means it is corresponding to unit pressure minus lambda, lambda is the slope of N C L L N P dash Y C and E D can be written as N naught minus lambda P dash Y this particular point. If that is the case you can substitute for N naught. So, E C is equal to N naught is equal to E D plus lambda L N P dash Y minus lambda L N P dash Y C. So, we can write E C is equal to E D minus lambda we take it outside. So, we will write P dash Y C minus L N P dash Y. Hence, E C is equal to E D minus lambda L N P dash Y C upon P dash Y. So, this is the expression for E C in terms of E D. So, you can substitute for E C in E A minus E B. So, now our ultimate aim is to get the total volumetric strain delta E. So, we have now obtained the expression for E A, we have obtained the expression for E B, 
we have also obtained the expression for EC in terms of ED. So, one will get eliminated. So, we know that delta E is equal to ED plus kappa ln p dash y upon p dash a minus E C minus kappa ln p dash y c upon p dash b by substituting for equations E a and E b. If that is the case, delta E is equal to E d plus kappa ln p dash y upon p dash a minus we substitute for the expression for E z in terms of E d that will give minus E d plus lambda ln p dash y c upon p dash y minus kappa ln p dash y c upon p dash b. Now, this E d and this E d gets cancelled off. Now, we have got rid of E c and E d. Now, if we expand this, we can write kappa ln p dash y minus kappa ln p dash a. So, this becomes this plus lambda ln p dash y c minus lambda ln p dash y for this expression minus kappa ln p dash y c and it is minus. So, it is minus of minus will become kappa ln p dash b. Now, we can rearrange the terms. For example, if you consider ln p dash y c this particular one ln p dash y c minus kappa ln p dash y c. So, if you take p dash y c out, outside you will get lambda minus kappa and if you take p dash y outside that is for this particular term. So, you take minus of lambda minus kappa into p dash y. So, that is how we get lambda minus kappa into ln p dash y c minus ln p dash y plus kappa into ln p dash b minus ln p dash a. So, delta E can be written as lambda minus kappa ln p dash y c upon p dash y plus kappa ln p dash b upon p dash a. So, what is actually these points? Let us see lambda minus kappa into ln that is the expanded yield curve. We are trying to find out this incremental strain. So, total volumetric strain which it has undergone when it moves from when the ESP expands from A to B. So, for that what is the maximum yield stress corresponding to expanded yield curve that is P dash Y C. So, ln P dash Y C that is the maximum divided by the maximum yield stress of the initial yield curve. So, that is the ratio. So, ln of P dash Y C upon P dash Y into lambda minus kappa plus the elastic portion that is kappa into ln P dash B upon P dash A. So, that is the expanded point that is B upon A. So, that will give us the total void uh, change in volumetric change in uh, that is represented by void ratio. So, delta E we have obtained. So, we can very well define the total change in volumetric strain as delta epsilon P dash that is the total change in volumetric strain that is delta. So, delta is important incremental please keep this in mind. So, delta epsilon P dash is equal to we know that it is change in void ratio upon initial void ratio. So, that is initial volume not initial void ratio initial volume. So, change in volume is represented by delta E upon the original volume which is 1 plus E naught. Now, we have obtained the expression for delta E. So, we can write the total change in volumetric strain delta epsilon P dash is equal to 1 by 1 plus E naught into delta E. So, delta E comes from here that is lambda minus kappa ln P dash y c upon P dash y plus kappa ln P dash b upon P dash a. So, that is about the total change in volumetric strain. Now, we, we will just highlight. Now, what we want? We are not interested in total volumetric strain, rather we want the components 
both the elastic volumetric strain and the plastic volumetric strain. So, we will see how to get that. Before that, I will show the expanded view of this particular circle which is denoted as I. So, E L and P dash we are just focusing on the part I. So, A B which is this is represented by this line and there is unloading that is happening. So, if you consider this E A E B is the void ratio and the points are E F. Now, what is this unloading? Like if you consider with reference to point A, we can say that this is the void ratio that it got regained. When the load is released, what happens is this much of the strain or this much of the void ratio it regained, the soil regained. So, that is nothing but the elastic component. So, P dash A, P dash B, the pressure, F E, this particular distance that is F E is the elastic component of delta epsilon P dash and that is represented by delta epsilon P dash E. Now, soil unloaded from B will move along the unloading line with respect to the maximum yield point P dash Y C and that is what I have already explained. Now, you are unloading it from B means that corresponds to the uh, unloading reloading line at corresponding to point C that is the maximum yield uh, stress is P dash Y C. So, delta epsilon P dash E can be written as delta E upon 1 plus E naught that is E E that is corresponding to this particular point E E minus E B upon 1 plus E naught. So, this will give the elastic component because this much is the elastic volume change or regaining. So, we know that E B is equal to E kappa minus kappa ln P dash B the way we have done it before and E E is equal to E kappa minus kappa ln P dash E. So, delta epsilon P dash E is equal to kappa upon 1 plus E naught ln P dash B upon P dash E. So, if you rearrange this and you substitute for E E minus E B, what we are going to get is this that is epsilon P dash is the required elastic volumetric strain increment. So, volumetric strain increment the elastic component is epsilon P dash E and we can easily write kappa upon 1 plus E naught into ln P dash B upon P dash E. We can also write it as kappa divided by 1 plus E naught ln P dash B upon P dash A because P dash E and P dash A both are same. So, you will get uh, now this is the reference point uh, when the ESP moves from A to B what is the elastic component of volumetric strain that is delta epsilon P dash E is equal to kappa is the critical state parameter that represents the unloading reloading line divided by 1 plus E naught, E naught uh, 1 plus E naught is nothing but the initial volume ln which is the final point P dash B which is the initial point P dash A on the yield curve I mean to say from yield curve to yield curve. We also know epsilon P dash E is equal to delta P dash by K dash because this is an elastic parameter, it is a linear response. So, we can always write it as delta epsilon P dash E is equal to P dash which is the stress upon the bulk modulus K dash. Now, we have said the volumetric elastic strain, we need to also determine volumetric plastic strain. We have determined the total volumetric strain, we have determined the elastic volumetric strain. So, obviously, the plastic volumetric strain is total minus the elastic component and that is what is written here. Delta epsilon P dash P is equal to delta epsilon P dash minus delta epsilon P dash E. Symbol delta is important as I told in the beginning incremental stress. So, if you substitute this in the equation, there is a total uh, volumetric strain minus the elastic component of volumetric strain will give the plastic strain and that if you expand the, the terms will get cancelled off and finally, we will be left with delta epsilon P dash P is equal to lambda minus kappa 1 plus E naught ln P dash Y C upon P dash Y. So, 
the plastic component can be represented by the critical state parameter lambda minus kappa upon 1 plus e naught into ln the which is the yield curve we are referring to that is from p dash y to p dash y c. So, that will come here ln p dash y c upon p dash y. Now, for undrained condition we know that the total volumetric strain will be 0. So, this component delta epsilon p dash is equal to 0. In that case, we get the expression delta epsilon p dash e is equal to minus of delta epsilon p dash p that is for an additional information. So, we have now completed the volumetric strain part. Now, we are left with shear strain. So, we need to determine the shear strain. Now, for determining shear strain, we have we know that about the plastic potential and how it expands. So, yield curve y is represented as p dash square minus p dash p dash y plus q square by m square equal to 0 from where this equation comes because this is m c c m and the yield curve corresponds to ellipse. This is the equation of the ellipse. We have already seen that it follows associated flow rule and normality rule which is applicable for MCCM. We have discussed this in detail. Please refer back if you want to revise it. Now, the resultant plastic strain increment which is represented as delta epsilon p cap is equal to delta epsilon p. We are just taking for sake of convenience that is the incremental form. For a given stress increment, we know that because of normality rule it is normal to the plastic potential function. And we also know because of associated flow rule in MCCM plastic potential function is same as yield curve. So, we do not have two equations, the equation for yield curve itself is good enough for defining plastic potential function. So, here in Q p dash this is what we have already seen, this is the ESP, this is the yield curve the same as the plastic potential function. This is the direction which is normal to the curve at this particular point of contact is delta epsilon p which is plastic strain increment vector. We have used this particular symbol initially which is considered same as delta epsilon p. Now, here you have the component of delta epsilon p dash p which we have already determined in the previous slide. We are left with delta epsilon q p which we do not know which is the plastic component of deviatoric strain and this we have already determined. So, our next task is to find out what is delta epsilon q p. Now, normal to the yield curve can be obtained by differentiating y. Now, basic calculus says that we can get the normal to the yield curve by differentiating yield curve. Uh, by differentiating the equation of yield curve. So, we get tangent and from tangent we can get the normal. So, dy the differential is 2 p dash d p dash minus p dash y d p dash plus 2 q by m square d q equal to 0. So, if you rearrange it the slope d q by d p dash is equal to p dash y upon 2 minus p dash upon q by m square that is rearranging this equation. So, slope is obtained. Now, normal to the yield curve that is if you multiply the slope of normal and uh, tangent it is going to be minus 1 and that is what we are written here. So, uh, the reciprocal of minus of 1 by d q by d p dash is the normal to the yield curve and that is represented as minus d p dash upon d q. So, normal in terms of plastic strain we, we know from this particular figure it is d of epsilon q p upon d of epsilon p dash. So, this by this is the slope of this plastic strain increment vector and the slope of the normal from this is given as minus d p dash by d q. So, this slopes can be equated. So, we can always write d epsilon q p equal to d epsilon p dash p equal to minus of d p dash upon d q. Now, minus d p dash by d q can be written as q by m square upon p dash y by 2 minus p dash which comes from the previous slide. We have already obtained the equation for d q upon d p dash. So, we are taking the minus sign inside we have 
d epsilon q p upon d epsilon p dash p equal to q by m square into p dash minus p dash y by 2, this minus goes inside, which can be further simplified as 2 q upon m square 2 p dash minus p dash y d epsilon q p upon d epsilon p p dash again it can be written as 2 q upon p dash that is you are dividing it by p dash m square 2 minus p dash y upon p dash. So, q by p dash is nothing but stress ratio eta which we have seen in our previous discussions. And we have also derived the equation for p dash upon p dash y which is equal to m square upon m square per plus eta square. Please refer to MCCM discussion for this. So, these two relationships are known which can be substituted in this. So, if you substitute d epsilon q p upon d epsilon p dash p is equal to 2 eta for q by p dash m square into 2 this 2 minus p dash y upon p dash is the reciprocal of this which is m square plus eta square upon m square. So, here you can always uh, return 2 m square minus m square plus eta square by m square. So, this m square and m square gets cancelled off. So, finally, d epsilon q p upon d epsilon p dash p is equal to 2 eta divided by m square minus eta square. So, when you do the rearrangement here, this m square m square goes 2 m square minus m square is uh, m square minus eta square. So, you finally get this expression for d epsilon q p. Please note we have already got this for d epsilon p dash p, the expression is there, we know the value. So, knowing the critical state parameter and the stress ratio, we can find out d epsilon q p. Now, the elastic part of the uh, deviatrix strain, we already know that is delta epsilon q e is equal to delta q upon 3 g. Now, equations for strains are only valid for small changes in stress, I mean to say incremental form. So, the moment you are talking about yield at point from first yielding to the next small increment of stress that is represented by another yield curve. So, between the initial yield curve and the reference yield curve which we are talking about there is a small stress increment and we are talking about that small strain increment. So, all the equations that we have discussed till now is referring to that small incremental strain. Not possible to determine failure strains by substituting failure stress directly. So, if you want to determine what is the failure strain, we should not simply substitute the failure stress and get the result. We need to get the small increments, you keep on adding it and then get the final strain. So, CSM is an elastoplastic model, so it is not elastic model. So, you cannot simply substitute point stress and get the strain. So, strains should be calculated for small increment of stresses from yielding to failure. So, you will have different components of uh, strains from the first yielding to the failure. So, the total components of strain increments are added to obtain the total plastic strain. So, these small small components up to failure is added together to get the total plastic strain. So, drained compression, if you want to determine the stress for MCCM that is corresponding to drained compression. So, what we have done is we have determined all the strain components knowing the MCCM model and the critical state parameters. Now, what we are referring to is we are just summing up to say how do you determine the stresses which we have already discussed before, but in prediction when we discussed about this we did not specifically mention. So, when I say determination of stresses in MCCM, what are the stresses which we are concerned about? We want yield stresses that is when the ESP meets the yield curve that is the initial yield curve. So, that yield point is important. So, q y p dash y corresponding to the first yielding. Then we are interested in the failure stresses that is q f and p dash f. 
along with that the strain and stiffness comes into picture, but what we are more interested in this particular lecture or this particular course is the stress components. So, we have yield as well as failure stress components in terms of Q and P dash. So, how to determine this? And also, we also need to find out whether it is for drained compression or for undrained compression. So, that is what we will just quickly glance through how to obtain the stress components in this particular slide. Now, another aspect is the pore water pressure, the excess pore water pressure corresponding to yielding and the excess pore water pressure corresponding to failure. Now, how do we do that? We know if it is undrained test, we know that there is a total stress path. So, we know that it is at 3, draw that, get the difference between total stress and the effective stress. So, uh, determining pore water pressure is also a straightforward task. So, for drained compression, let us see P naught dash that is the initial state of the soil, P dash C is the maximum isotropic compression point and the critical state parameters are known. So, this is the yield curve which corresponds to the maximum yield stress P dash C. P naught dash is the initial point at which it has been unloaded, let us say is an LOC point, this is the ESP. Now, this is the point where it yields which is given as P dash Y and QY. So, let us give an example how to determine QY and P dash Y. We know from this figure ESP meets the ellipse at this particular point that is q y and p dash y. We know the equation of ellipse. So, yield stresses p dash y q y can be determined by substituting this in the ellipse equation because it intersects, ESP intersects the yield curve. So, now this is the equation that is p dash square minus p dash p dash c plus q square by m square equal to 0. Now, for p dash substitute p dash y and for q substitute q y which will give p dash y square minus p dash y p dash c plus q square y by m square equal to 0. From this geometry, we can also write q y is equal to this is 3, this is a slope is 3 into p dash y minus p naught dash. Substituting for q y in this particular equation, we will get p dash y square minus p dash y p dash c plus 9 p dash y minus p naught dash square upon m square. Now, this can be simplified into a quadratic equation in terms of p dash y square. So, solving the quadratic equation, we will get the value of p dash y and once we get p dash y, we can get q y. So, knowing p dash y, q y can be determined. Similarly, P dash F and Q F can be determined from the e intersection of ESP with CSL, this particular point. Now, this is nothing but the geometry. So, from the geometry of the figure, we can determine Q F and P dash F. So, rather, we have discussed how to determine Q F and P dash F in the previous lecture, the same geometry. Similar procedure can be adopted for undrained compression test. So, let us try to summarize what we have done essentially in this lecture is to demonstrate how we can determine the strains from the MCCM model. The total change in volumetric strain is expressed in terms of critical state parameters. Volumetric elastic and plastic strain is determined. Plastic strain increment vector and volumetric plastic strain can be used to determine plastic shear strain. So, this also we have discussed. Equations for strain are only valid for small changes in stress specifically when it yields and when there is expansion of yield curve. Strains should be calculated for small increment of stresses beyond yielding. These small increment of strains are added together to determine the total plastic strain. So, now we have completed most of the aspects of the critical state module. Now, we are left with uh, the final aspect of critical state where we are going to sum up all these information and understand 
what is known as the boundary surface, the state boundary surface, where it limits all the possible soil states. So, the next lecture will be on state boundary surface and with that we, we intend to finish this particular module 4. So, that is all for now. Thank you.